Hello, and welcome to another video. This is as much for me as it is for you, because I used to be absolutely awful at taking pictures of my work. So I thought that it would be pretty useful for me to go through the things that I'm planning to do more of when I'm taking pictures of the work that I'm, I'm doing. I'll also let you know and keep you updated as to how this actually affects the level of work that I get and the quality of work that I can get from it. So product photography is massive and businesses invest huge amounts of money into it. So why don't we invest a small fraction of our time as gardeners and landscapers into making the pictures of the work that we do that little bit better. These businesses know that it works and that's why they do so much in order to uh, make the photos look amazing. And by that I mean companies like bathroom companies, kitchen companies, restaurants, uh, anyone that does any of the like, major home improvements, they spend thousands and thousands and thousands on just taking pictures of the products. So let's get into it. Number one is your composition. Think about what you're taking the picture of. Make sure that that is the focal point of the picture. It sounds obvious, but I'll show you some of the pictures that I've taken before and you would be looking at it thinking, what, what am I actually looking at? What does the person, what does the photographer want me to pay attention to? And I wouldn't know. So if I can do it, maybe you've done it before, you know, perhaps you're an absolutely fantastic photographer and you don't need to watch this video. Straight some sort of depth. So can you show that there are some things in the foreground, uh, some interest in the background as well. You could experiment with the angle that you take your picture at. So instead of just taking all the pictures stood up like this, you could experiment getting down low to the ground and taking pictures like that, standing up high on something, taking a picture from there, asking whether you can go into an upstairs bedroom window, uh, standing on top of your ladders, taking a picture down. It's all your interpretation and how you think it will best display the work that you've done. But don't just rush and think that it's going to be fine if you just take a few pictures of something without really thinking how to frame it. Other things about the composition, what can your audience relate to? Uh, if, if you're taking a picture of a patio that you've just built, then why not furnish it and put some details in there? So ask if they've got a set of outside furniture and arrange that so that it's got some drinks on it. Um, I'll show you, so you show you, uh, I'll show you an example of that where there's a great picture. It's made by the details. It's got some nice colours that have been brought in with some of the details like the orange that's in the Aperol. It looks so much better for having that in there and actually your customers, your potential customers, are going to be looking at that and they're going to be relating to it because your potential customers don't buy your patio, they buy in their mind, they buy being able to sit outside in the summer having a drink. With kitchen showrooms and bathroom showrooms they don't just show you the picture that the plumber might have taken as he was leaving uh, of an empty bathroom they'll try and create some sort of ambience and they'll put candles and things in there make you want to be in that picture the second point is light light in photography is massive and i can't do it justice and i probably couldn't even explain to you all the technical intricacies all you need to know is that in the morning just after the sun's risen, in the evening, just after the sun set, and on an overcast day, you can get the pictures way more easily than you can if it's bright sunshine. And number three, which is to take time to tidy up the image. And I'll go through some of the pictures that I've got, and you'll see that there'll be something like a broom that I didn't bother to just remove from the picture. Bad backgrounds are like dirty dishes behind somebody on their dating profile. If I show you that my desk, 
you think how bad this is going to look if I'm going to include this in a picture. So let's how it, see how it looks once I've tidied it up. How much better is that? So I've just got out of my dressing gown, tidied up the desk, and the shot smiles better already. When I was leaving that washing line in the last picture, what sort of message does that send to a customer? That I couldn't be bothered to tidy up an image and show the level of care and attention to detail that they're probably going to value. Number four, assess the images as you go. So this is something that I've done loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of times where I've just rushed, snapped a few images, gone back and then realised when I got home, oh that one was out of focus, that one I've cut off some of the main subject, uh, or I took a before picture, two weeks later it's coming to the end of the job and I want to take an after and I take it at the wrong angle. Whereas if you're going to take a before and after picture, you need to take it from pretty much exactly the same spot. Otherwise, the person that views the image has to do quite a lot of brain work just to figure out what it is they're looking at and what's actually changed. And the fifth one, which I found really, really good, uh, and it's quite unusual, I'd say it, is that make sure you're in the picture. Get some action portraits. Picture of you doing some work or picture of you in the garden, your face is your business. The reputation that you work so hard to cultivate is actually in your face. So why aren't you showing your face as your business to your potential new customers? A face is a really, really powerful image. So make sure you've got a portrait of yourself. People don't trust logos. They don't trust sign writing on vans. They trust you. They trust the person, the person that is accountable and so make sure that you, and it's genuinely you can get that across in a portrait. It's much more trustworthy to see someone's face. Just, we're human beings, we respond to that sort of thing really well. I hope this was useful to you. It's actually been really useful to me to just clear these things up in my mind and, and I hope that it's allowed you to do something similar and you've been able to think about how you can take better pictures of the work you're doing. Ultimately, it should be quite good fun actually setting up these pictures. You should enjoy trying to make your work look as good as it possibly can. You've done all, made all of that effort to keep building these things, so why not show it off? Do what it takes to make it look amazing. Thanks again.